Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I'm going to greet you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thanking Him for this time. And uh, we thank Him for the, the day and the hour that we live in, uh, for what God has given us this day. Uh, just as every day had, had their word, uh, we are no difference. We have ours, and God has given it to us. Not only has He given it to us, but He's actually come on the scene as He has in every time, and He's manifested the Word to actually make it live. So we so appreciate Him for that. Let's just open up with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank You again today. Lord, we're so glad to, to know You, Lord. To know You in the power, Lord, of the Holy Spirit that has brought forth these bodies that have Quicken them, Lord, so that they can believe the word, Lord. We know there was something on the inside that was quickened as the Holy Ghost come upon us, Lord, and it quickened us to the word, and it quickened these bodies and brought them subject to the word, Lord. So we're thankful to, to, for that today. And Lord, we give you praise for it. And we thank you for this time and this day, for the message, uh, for the great Holy Spirit that's among us today, Lord. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, I want to take a little, uh, to give this a title, I want to call it uh, the, person of, the Person of Truth. The Person of Truth. And I was thinking about uh, just that word truth the other day and uh, I was started off I was thinking about how Jesus said in uh, John 17 17 he said sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth and then we know that Jesus Christ uh, is the word so it all uh, more or less just ties back together that the, the truth is a person and it's a person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So actually when we're talking about truth, we're talking about, we're talking about him. And then when we're talking about the word, we're talking about the truth and that is him. So it just, uh, you just can't separate uh, one from the other. But as I was uh, thinking about this, I just got to running it through uh, the, the scriptures, and I thought, well, I'll just uh, run it through and uh, see how uh, what the scriptures actually say about the truth. And then there was many, many places, but as I was going through. Uh, the lexicon there and uh, so on. I was just the ones that seemed to really uh, stick out to me. I made little notes of those and so I just want to uh, run through those as we look at the person of truth. And so um, it would be hard for you to get your Bibles but if you wanted to I'm going to uh, Galatians uh, first and Galatians 4.16 and so we read John 17.17 17, that uh, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. So just going to run through these and uh, see what the scriptures give us. But let's, let's see what the scriptures say about truth. And remember we're calling this uh, the person of truth. Okay, Galatians 4.16 I am therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Now here Paul is. He's come to the Galatians. They have initially embraced him. And then we're coming down through the chapter and he gets over here. He says, my goodness, I am I therefore be become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Because I tell you ab about the word. Remember, he said... The things I write unto you, they are the commandments, of the, they are the word. 
They are Jesus Christ in word form, the person of truth. So he said, I t I'm telling you the truth and now I'm becoming your enemy. It's the same thing today. You tell somebody the truth and you'll make them an enemy. Why? Because they cannot accept the truth. And the truth is the word and the word is Jesus. And they want some, they want some, what would be the word? They want some worldly Jesus that goes around patting everybody and everything else and let them do whatever they want to and get by with it and have all kind of false doctrine, false, false everything and still uphold their testimony. I was thinking today, you know, when people in, in, in regular churches, when they say, well, uh, so-and-so got saved in church, and I'm talking about nominal churches, because you cannot get saved without the truth. I'm talking not a piece or a part. I'm talking about the truth, Jesus Christ. So, so somebody says they got saved in one of these nominal type churches, what they're telling you is that they joined the church. That's exactly what they're telling you because they didn't join Christ. They didn't join the Word because a large percent of what they're doing is contrary to the Word, which makes them absolutely anti-Christ. So anyway, tell somebody the truth and you'll make them an enemy. Look here, you just get some woman on the street and tell her, you know, them pants you in makes you an abomination to God. She said, you better shut your mouth and leave me alone. Well, it's the truth. You've cut your hair off and that's against the word of God. You ain't got no right to tell me about my hair. What's my hair got to do with it? You will make them your enemy as long as you pat them and let them get by with everything oh sure everything's fine and and paul he had to come come with this and everybody else it went, and no matter what age you in you come jesus told them the truth and they killed him so now let's go a little further here in ephesians we're talking about the person of truth Ephesians 4, and we want to go from 11 down to, or maybe we'll go to 16. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teaching, teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, how are you going to edify the body without the truth? There, there's, there's no way to do it. And that's what this ministry is supposed to be bringing. The person of Christ, the truth. So it falls back on the ministry. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. The unity of the revelation. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. If you have the knowledge of the Son of God, you're going to have the truth. And unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature, that means you come to an adult age, you come to maturity, the stature of the fullness of Christ. Look here, what do he say? That we henceforth be no more children. You're supposed to be growing up. Not no longer a child that you can... Uh, say, well, you know, I believe in Santa Claus and I believe in the Easter Bunny and I believe the, the Tooth Fairy and everybody else is going to bring me something. No, you're supposed to be growing up. And what is you're supposed to grow up in? You're supposed to grow up in the Word so that you can have strong meat, not be get by on milk. So that's why an eagle was born eating meat. So that we be henceforth no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. What kind of doctrine? It's if it's blowing you off the path. What kind of doctrine is it? It's sure ain't true doctrine. It's false doctrine. 
It's something that some man has and you took away from it or added to it and is saying something totally different than what it's supposed to. With every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, the devil works through man. Well, we, Brother Graham said, God is man's agent. Well, the man is a devil's agent too. That's who he's got to work from, through. And now, listen to this, this, this explanation or this example. It says, by the slight of men, by cunning craftiness. Now, that, when I read that, that sounds just like the serpent. And the serpent, he's still preaching to this very day. He blinds the eyes of the people by their traditional ways. Yeah. And they're also carnal minded. They, can't, they don't even know it. So anyway, by the slight of men, by the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. What are they doing? They lie in to deceive. Well, that's exactly what happened right off the first thing. Eve was deceived. And look here. This Eve down here, not God's, but this other one is claiming to be the, the church. She's already been deceived the same way. From which the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. In love. Well... God is love. But we're talking about, if we're talking about the person of truth, we're talking about the person of love because God is love. Brother Brown said, Jesus was God's love expressed to the world. And what did they do with God's love expressed? They nailed it to a cross. Hmm. Okay, I want to, this, let's go down to I want to look into John chapter 3 and catch a few verses. Now we're talking about the person of truth. Everybody, want, want, everybody wants truth. They tell, you they, they tell you they want truth, but they want the truth like they like it. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not, believeth not what? Believeth not is condemned already. He don't have to go to a judgment because he's already been judged and condemned. Why? Because he believed, believed not what? The word, the truth. Because, look here. I don't care where, what day you was in. I don't care where you was in Noah's day, Moses' day, Elijah's day, Isaiah's day, whoever days. God had a truth for that day, and He's got a truth for this day. And that's where the, the rub comes. Already, because He hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds, their works were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. So look here. They don't like to be uncovered. They don't like for the light to be turned on them. It's just like 
to, and when you go in some room at night and you turn on the light and all the bugs and everything else scatters. Why? They don't like the light. Well, he had them kind of creatures so that we could actually see what the light does. The light, what? It scares them to death. They, they, can't, they can't contend with it. They don't know what to do with it. They love darkness. But he that, for everyone that, that doeth evil, hateth the light, neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And look here. How you gonna how you gonna have all these evil deeds if you're walking in the light? Because everybody gets to see. But he that doeth, that sounds like John, be a doer of the word, doer of truth, cometh to the lights, cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Look here, you don't, you can actually see the truth, but you can actually do the truth. You can see the truth because Jesus is the truth, the person of truth. But you know, a lot of people, they can't see that. There's no way for them to see it because their eyes have been closed. Now, let's go a little bit further. The person of truth, John 4, 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers... Now, so if there are some true worshipers, there must be some false ones because the false were made off of the true. And that's just like it was in the beginning. There was a true worshiper that God accepted his worship and that was Abel. And there was one that come with what he thought God wanted and it wasn't. And God did not accept it. But you know what? He seen what God would accept and he wouldn't bring it. He got, what happened? He got mad, and that's what happens today. They see what the, a true worshiper brings, and rather than to turn around to repent and so on, no, they just get mad. Make, you, make, you make an enemy. Won't come to the light. But now, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Spirit and truth. Look here. You cannot separate those two because they are inseparable. This truth is Jesus, and Jesus has the Spirit of God that is life. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. So, the true worshipers shall worship in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. And they that worship, well, I thought today, they said, that, well, you know, God is a man. Well, He was a man. Why was He a man? He was a man so He could pay the price, so He could be the sacrifice. But He said, I come from God and I'm going back to God. God is a spirit, and they that worship him, look here, M-U-S-T, must worship him in spirit and truth. And he said, thy word is truth. Okay, everybody claims to be worshiping him, but when you bring the truth, that stops all the worship. That totally shuts it down. They say, oh, I don't, we don't, well, my church don't believe that. What, what do you mean? You're supposed to be worshiping in spirit and truth, and the truth is the word, and it's a person of Jesus Christ, and you're supposed to love Jesus. But I'll tell you what, when you really get down to it, this, this modern church is the deceived church. The person that they worship is Satan. And they, how do they worship him? 
through a creed, through something that's contrary to the truth. So, and that's, that's pretty important. He said, you must in spirit and in truth. And thy word is truth. Okay? Let's look to John 8, 20, 8, 32. And you shall know the truth. Well, how would we know the truth? Because God reveals it to His elect. That's how. It's that, it's that unwritten word. It's that one, it's that one that's between the lines there. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. What's it going to make you free from? Unbelief. It's going to make you free from sin. Because now you know the truth and you know these other things are contrary to the truth. So why would you want to do that? Hmm. Look here. John 8. Now we're talking about the person of truth. And you've got to know the person of truth. Most people don't even know who he is. They think he's the second person, or that he is the second person, or whatever more. They don't even know who he is. When he was God manifested in the flesh for the purpose of being the sacrifice to pay the price. John 8.40 Uh-oh, look at here. But now you, ye seek to kill me. Now here... Paul has said, the Galatians, like he said, I've told you the truth and I made you an enemy. And now here Jesus is in John 8, 40, but now ye seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. And they was claiming, well, you know, we're... No, we're Abraham's seed. Well, he said, you know, you're acting a whole lot different than uh, Abraham. He rejoiced to see my day. And now, y'all, I've told you the truth and you want to kill me. So what does that let me know? Tell him the truth and they'll try to kill you. Oh, nowadays, they, they, can't, they can't nail you to the cross. No. What do they do now? Oh, they just kill your influence. They said, don't listen that that crazy guy, he's off the he's dead. He's went off the deep end. He he's a wild man. He thinks Jesus has already come. No, I don't think Jesus has come. I know Jesus has come because he has fulfilled the word pertaining to that. In the day when the Son of Man shall be revealed, that scripture. Luke 17, 30 has been fulfilled. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. It's been fulfilled. But no. You think they could see that? No, because they're looking for a man that's just flying in the sky somewhere. Well, it's contrary. Said the Lord shall descend. Well, they think, well, that's a man. No, that wasn't. That was a pillar of fire. That was a light. That was the truth. <sighs> Tell them the truth and they'll kill you. Boy, that's really something, isn't it? Tell somebody the truth and they'll just kill you. Okay, look at it. This is a scripture that everybody knows. John 14 and 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. I, now, he said, I am. Not I will be, I was. He said, I am the way. So that lets me know that the way is a person. And the way is truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
And he's saying, I am. That's a person. That's present. And he's still that. So, the way, the truth, the life is a person. The person of truth. But you think that in the world catch that? Oh, no. No. No way. And he goes on, he said, now listen. Okay, so the way, the truth, the life is a person. And when you receive that person, Jesus Christ, you receive all that he has. You don't get a piece or a part. Everything that God had put in him, he has put in us. But then they think, well, you know, I know there's, there's something somewhere. No, there's not. That's what they think. And that's what they tell you. That's what they preach. But it's contrary to the Word. Look here. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Look here. This Spirit of truth? Look here, he said, you must worship me in spirit and truth. Now, he's got to, it said, the spirit of truth. So the spirit lets me know that the truth has a life. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you. Uh-oh. The Spirit of truth is with them. But he didn't stop there. And he says, shall be in you. This Spirit of truth, because it was right then, it was all bottled up in one man, Jesus Christ. But it was going to be released to the believers. And soon as that promise come, it was released on the day of Pentecost. And thereafter. But the world can't get it. They can't receive it because they see it. Then. Neither knoweth him the person of truth. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. You can't see him and can't know him. Now look here, John 16, 16, 3. The person of truth. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Now he's telling, look here. He just told them previously, he said, I'm with you now, but I'm going to get in you. This spirit of truth is walking with you now, but one day it's going to be in you. And then he goes a little further here in John 16 and lets a little more out about this person of truth. He said, How be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Is that right? Going to get not, not to a piece or a part or something. He's going to guide you in all truth. What all truth is it? It is the truth for your day and hour. And it's been that way coming all the way down through. But look here. We're, we're down here on the wind up. We're down here when Reve Revelations 10, 7, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin, the, the full mystery is going to be revealed and was. So we're down here. We get all the truth. And look, how about this? The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth is a guide. Now, why would anybody, if he's come to guide you and lead you and help you, why would anybody refuse that? It would be like somebody uh, going on a, 
a hike through the jungle and you got a guide and, and he says, follow me and you go off on your own trail somewhere else. Well, what do you think is going to happen? You don't know nothing about what's out there. But he does. He's familiar. And the spirit of truth does too. That's why he's trying to guide you around all the pitfalls. The pitfalls of what? This world and all it has and everything that goes with it. So he's going to guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And he certainly has done that this day. Brother Brown preached the future home. He, he preached things that are to be. And prophesy and let us know so we wouldn't be looking for something false. John 18, 37. Now we're talking about the person of truth. Pilate therefore said unto him, Are, now this is Pilate talking to Jesus before the crucifixion because you know he was trying to find out what kind of man is this. And he said, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. For this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. What is the truth? The truth is the word. And look here. He said, Thy word is truth. Well, it's one thing to speak it, but it has to be manifested. And that's what Jesus come to manifest was the Word. Every word that had been written of Him, He was to manifest it. But Pilate, he didn't know nothing about that. That I should bear witness unto the truth, Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He always has a voice. And he said his voice is his word. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? Well, Jesus just told us back there in John 17. He said, uh, sanctify them Father, through thy word. Thy word is truth. So now Pilate asked him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find, I find in him no fault at all. Look here. So he didn't have to, to, to convince Pilate. He knew what Pilate's job was. It had already been put and written down what was going to happen to him, and he knew it. Now, let's come on a little further here. Let's go to person of truth now. Listen, Romans 1, chapter 1, and verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? My goodness. Who, let me read that again. Who changed the truth of God in... Uh, well, I know who changed it. Who was the first one that changed it? Does anybody have a clue? Well, right there in Genesis, uh, the serpent said, You'll surely not die. He changed the truth of God into a lie, and he's been doing it ever since. You think he comes with a communist book or a book of Mao or a, a Hinduism or a, a, a Mohammedan or something like that? No, he comes with the Bible. He said, this is what it says right here. The word that Jesus said, go forth into all the world and baptize him in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He said that right here. This is what Jesus said. How come never one person in the whole Bible was ever baptized that way? Because Peter had the revelation 
of what Jesus said. And he gets up under inspiration. He said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that he'll come to pass. And he said, they said, well, what, what, what must we do? He said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Huh. But they said, no, I'll take what Jesus said. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, who changed the truth of God in, well, you reckon that could happen with the message? Oh, they, well, they say, oh no, we were over here in the message. The devil's not over here. Don't you kid yourself. The devil's got the rest of the religion. He's got them all the way down. He's got ever, ever so-called Christian religion plus all the rest of them. And you think he's just going to let us go over here and cruise along? And no. He sits on the, he comes to church every Sunday and sits on the first row. Hmm. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature. Exactly. And so, still does it. Changes the truth into a lie. Get up and hold the Bible and read it. Get up and hold the message and read it. And then and they say, well, well, one day the graves are going to pop over. One day Jesus is going to come. One day this is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the graves, it, you know what? The graves did pop open. But not the way they thought. And so what they're doing, they're out there with the shovels trying to cover them back over. Galatians 3 and 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? My goodness. You would have, you would have thought the Galatians was really getting this. But evidently, they had some problems. Because he's called them foolish, and he says, Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Jesus, the Word, the person of the Word. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Well, look here. The crucifixion, they could still look back in that day, and it hadn't been that long. So what they were talking about was almost like current events. Listen. Ephesians 1 and 13. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth. You had to hear the word of truth. And he said, after you heard that, ye also trusted the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. No wonder he asked them, those, those people over there. In Acts 9, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, well, we don't know anything about no Holy Ghost. See, have you received since? You've got to believe first and you have to believe the truth. And the truth is Jesus. And it, and it is the person of Christ. So you, you trust. You heard. You believed. And after you believed, you were sealed 
with the same thing they got on the day of Pentecost. There's only one Holy Ghost. There's only that promise. The promise is unto you and your children and them that are far off. It's all the same promise. The same Jesus. But you know, there is a word for the day. And I, I was, I've been reading things and people said, oh, we need to go back to Pentecost. They're not talking about the denomination. They're talking about to the day of, day of Pentecost. The book of Acts. Well, look here. Evidently, and these, these are not denominations. These are message, so-called message believers. Evidently, they haven't read where Brother Brown said, the word that, the, that fell on the day of Pentecost will not work today because that was Joel's prophecy being made manifest. That's not our prophecy. But no, you think the people? No. They said, well, if it ever comes, he'll write a book of Acts. I'll tell you what, there's been one written. But what happened? They didn't see it. Did, did they even, even believe the one that was being manifested in the people's day? No, they, they thought the people were crazy. Thought they had been bewitched, sure enough, because they were talking about, going around talking about some dead man that they knew was dead because they had crucified him and put him on the cross. Huh. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed any. It's just a different day. The same thing goes around and around. So the word of truth equals the gospel equals salvation. Look here. And that's why you just can't come with anything. You've got to come with the truth. And when you come with the truth, that's Jesus Christ. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. The person of truth. The person of truth right through the Bible here. People say, oh, well, you know, uh, uh, the Bible's my absolute. I got that today. Some some parents said, "Well, you know, the Bible, the Bible is my absolute." I, I well, I just I just said I said this. Well, you know, the Bible says that the word comes to the prophet, and the prophet gets the word and he gives it out. Oh, well, my goodness. Yeah, well, what we're talking about is in the Bible. What we're talking about, Malachi 4, 5, and 6, Revelations 10, 1 to 7, St. Luke 17, St. John 14, and all these other scriptures, we're talking about the Bible being manifested. Somebody else, they just they read it. Look here, we've seen it get up and move around. Oh, my life, spirit of truth. 2 Thessalonians 2.10 And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Now listen. Because they receive not the love of the truth. And he didn't stop there. That they might be saved. Uh-oh. Didn't receive what? The love of the truth. Love truth. Love Jesus. The person of truth. They didn't love that. Because when they you made the truth known to them, what? They become your enemy. They wanted to kill you. Because, now he said these kind of people, they're with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that, what? Perish. And they say, well, you know, uh, uh, everybody's going in. I don't care well, what church they belong to, you know, as long as they shook the preacher's hand and sat on the pew somewhere, well, you know, they'll make it in. Well, according to this, they won't. Because 
there is a truth. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And now listen, read through verse 11, second, Thessalonians 2. And for this cause, why? What cause? They didn't receive the love of the truth. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Now who's sending it? Because they didn't love the truth, God is going to send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And you know what? It's going to be the same lie that was told in the beginning. Just add a little to it, take a little away, change it, change the truth of God into a lie. And the people say, oh, man, man, he's reading right out of the Scripture there. He's reading right out of the message. This is great stuff here. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm-hmm. Now, well, if God is going to send them a strong delusion, how is he going to get this strong delusion to them? He's going to get it to them through the clergy. It's just like it was... In the days gone by, remember Micaiah went over there and Ahab had his 400 well-trained prophets and so on and old Joe Hastafite come over there and he said, you know, he said, don't you have it? Don't you have another one somewhere? He said, yeah, I got one, but I hate him. He's always prophesying evil. He said, well, could we hear what he says? And he come over there and he was absolutely contrary to what they were saying. But what he said was the truth. And so all of these were in one court. How about that? 400 to 1. And God was with the one. That's about like it is today. No, it would be worse than that today. Okay, let's see here. And God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Look here. And how are they going to believe this lie? He's going to take, he's going to take, he's going to take the Bible and he's going to add and he's going to take away. He's going to take the message and tell us we're looking for Jesus to come. And he'll find, he'll go well. And look at what he said back in 1954. Look what he said back here in 1956. Well, when Brother Brown preached the seals, he said, I did not know these things. But does that make any difference? I don't make any difference. No, we go not on anyway. And when he said, the seventh seal, nobody knew that was the coming of the Lord. And they just, whew, no way. And he got the people all looking at the sky. Well, one more, you know, there's going to be a rapture one day. They go, oh, we got to get out of here. No, we don't have to get out of here. We got a job to do. Our scripture is Revelations 10, 8 through 11 to prophesy again what God has done. And everybody's wanting to, everybody's wanting to leave. Hmm. So he, he sent them a strong delusion and he said that they should believe a lie. That they might be Damned. Man. You th God is doing this. Why? Because they received not the love of the truth. They said they loved Jesus, but they really didn't. They loved that figment of Jesus that the world has given to them, but the real Jesus, the truth Jesus, the spirit Jesus, they don't want nothing to do with that. Because why? It tears their little playhouse up. They can't go to church and cut their hair and bob it and everything else and claim God. Oh, you say, well, they're good people. Absolutely good people. Did you think K. Ephesus could have gotten to be the high priest if he wasn't a good man? And all them priests and everything else, could they have been priests if they wasn't good? If they even picked up a stick on the Sabbath day, they were stoned? My goodness. What? Mm. 
Okay, now. All right, so he sent them a strong delusion. They might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Look here. If, if they had pleasure in unrighteousness, that means they was having pleasure in something that was contrary to God because God's word is righteousness. He said, uh oh, verse 13, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren. There's that brethren. Beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Look here. There's one believing it and there's one rejecting it. Now, is that the difference right there? Where is salvation coming from? Belief of the truth. And how are you going to have claim salvation when you don't even receive the love of the truth? That shows how mixed up this... Look here. Most people, they don't read the Bible. And when they do, they just skim around on it. And could you imagine a bunch of women sitting around having a Bible study? Hmm. <sighs> but he's sending them a strong delusion. And the clergy is giving it to them just like he was back in Jesus' day. Who was all... Where was Satan at in that day? He was in that clergy. Telling the people to stay away from Christ. All right, let's go on. 1 Timothy 2 and 4. Who will have all men be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth. To know the truth. So that's how who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now listen. Whoa, we can we can at home now. It said, ever learning. Oh, that sounds like today. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, that's where we are today. Oh, they say, well, we've had the Bible for we've had the Bible for all these hundreds of years and everything. Oh, uh, well, 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 you know, what do we need a prophet for? So that he could bring you back to the truth, so that he could get rid of all the makeup and bring you back to the pure word of God. Turn us back. That's what they got on the day of Pentecost was the pure word of God. And that's what we have got this day because He was supposed to turn our hearts back. Ever learning. And I tell you what, never is a long time. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The person of truth is Jesus Christ. And everybody's claiming Jesus when they won't have him. Now listen where he goes to. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. And look here, we had our Moses this day. Our Moses was Brother Branham. And what did they do? They kicked him out. One of the last things he said, he said, I think I've only got one door to get in, and that's Jack Moore's church here in Shreveport. With a ministry like that. So do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds. That means 
They had no way. They had never been born again because a corrupt mind is a carnal mind which is an enemy to God. And it means it come through the corruption of a sex birth. Corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. The faith. The revelation of Jesus Christ. They know nothing about it. And could you imagine this? Know nothing about it, ever learning, and never able to come, and they up preaching about it, supposedly. No way. Okay, let's look in, in this Timothy a couple more times here. This is 2 Timothy 4, and then we're talking about now, we're, we're just letting the truth come down through the Bible. Everybody believes the Bible, amen? They say, oh, well, you know, the, the Bible is my absolute. Okay, praise the Lord, hallelujah. That's what we had. We had a Bible. We had a Bible prophet that come to give us the word. And he didn't change anything in here. He said the Bible become a new book and it never changed the first word. Preach, 2 Timothy 4.2. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, and out of season. Look here. I don't care which season you're in, you either in or out. He said, preach the word, be instant. If it's in, preach it. If it's out, preach it. And the word is truth. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Doctrine. It's your teaching. It's your belief. Well, they say, well, you know, we can't preach doctrine. Well, we can because that's what I believe. And just because somebody's preaching false doctrine, meaning I can't preach the true doctrine? Because it's what this is all about. Now, listen. Verse 3, for the time will come when they, uh-oh, there's a they, somebody's going to fulfill this day, will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers, and I put in there, False teachers, because we're supposed to be teachers. But what, what happened when you're preaching something exactly contrary to the Bible, to the message, to everything? So they're going to they gonna heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And he wouldn't finish. And they, these preachers, these teachers shall turn away their ears from the truth. What are they trying to get the people away from? The truth of God's Word, the person of truth, Jesus Christ, the Spirit of truth. Worship me in spirit and truth. And the people claim they're worshiping God. Well, I don't say their name. They might not be. They might be in the spirit because the spirit gets on the outside and make people woo, and it gets on the inside and they can do all kind of things. But look here, if it don't go to the inside of the inside, there's no way for you to have a birth. And the only way it can go to the inside, there has to be something on the inside. He called a seed to be quickened. And when you're quickened, old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Yes, you are a brand new creation in Christ. You're the continuation of His creation. You become His body that He's built down through the ages. Mm. And so they shall be, now look at me and I'm finished. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they shall be turned unto fables. 
Well, you know what fables is. It's little stories. That's what we used to tell the children. Little fables and so on. About Jack and the Beanstalk. And about Hansel and Gretel and all those little things. It, it, it tickled the children's ears. But look here. We're grown now. We're come to the statue of Christ. We're adults. We're mature. We're not children. We're not being tossed all around. We know where we stand. We know who God is. We know what He has done. Huh. Look here. How about this? Deny the truth and accept fables. Denominational church age fables. Deny the truth. What God, I'm talking about deny the truth. Something that God has done and vindicated and backed up. Deny that and accept denominational church age fables. And just go right on with it, preaching it just like it's the truth. And it's not the truth. Hmm. How about looking Hebrews. Hebrews 10, 26. The person of truth Jesus Christ I am the way the truth and the person Hebrews 10 26 for if we sin willfully uh oh now that is bad sin disbelieve willfully what? After that we have received the knowledge of the truth? And he said, you know, it, 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 it's not that you had to receive it, just to hear about it. What? There remaineth no more sacrifice from sins. And you got the sins because of the sin. Because if you was a believer, you wouldn't do that to start with. So if we sin willfully, and I'll tell you what, if there was ever a willful age, look here, back during the church ages, he said that he winked at it. Because they didn't. If, if you were to ask somebody back in the church, well, what is truth? They said, well, you know, uh, uh, Luther said, and then the, the Catholics said, and this one said, and that one said. Well, you say, and no one, you say, well, what is truth? They couldn't have told you. But look at here. We can tell them nowadays because God has vindicated and manifested His Word, and we know what the truth is. What is, look here, just make it real simple. What is the truth? It is the manifested word. Second John 1 4. This is what they call the apostle of love here. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. He rejoiced greatly. Why? Because they were walking in the truth. They were walking with the truth. And Brother Brown said, how can two walk together except they agree? I'm walking with the truth. I'm walking with Jesus. I'm walking with Christ because I agree with Him. 100%. Let's see, I'm going to read it. just a couple of uh, quotes here, and then we'll, we'll going to have to close here. But here's, a, here's one here, and the world falling apart there in New, in New York, 1963. But the world wants their Messiah. The world wants one. The church wants one. And what if God send them one? Hello, he did. Send them one. If God sent a Messiah, what would he be? He would not be a religious politician. He would not be an intellectual giant, as we call it. Oh, no. 
what would he be? He would be like Hebrews 13 and 8, the same that he was. He's always been. He would, he would be the Word of God. And look here, the Messiah now. He's, he's asking the question, what would he be? He would be the Word of God made manifest. The Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One. That's exactly, he was God's Word. He is God's Word. He'll forever be God's Word. Even the sounding forth of His coming was always the prophets who the Word came to. And here the Word comes in fullness. And now, if He would come again today, He would be a Word of God, manifested Word of God, vindicated Word of God, God living amongst us. That's the Messiah. He promised it. Amen. He would be that pillar of fire again, would be the same Messiah that led Israel. Amen. He would be the same Messiah. Sure, they would turn it down like they always did. They would turn it down. How? What? Like they always did. Because why? They don't love the truth. They'll, they're ever learning and they will never able, they can't identify it. No matter how much it would flash before them, there's no way for them to identify it. Paradox, Bakersfields, 1964. When John came upon the earth, he was a manifested Word of God for that hour. Well, look here. How about when Malachi, if he was Malachi 3 and he come to the earth and he was a manifested Word, how about when Malachi 4 comes, will he be the manifested Word? For that hour. We know that. He was God's manifested word because why? Isaiah said there would be the one of voice crying in the wilderness. Malachi, the last prophet said, Behold, I send my messenger before my face to prepare the way before the people. Now that was not Malachi 4. That was Malachi 3. John the Elijah of Malachi 3, not Malachi 4. Because when Malachi 4, when the prophecy comes forth, the earth is to be burnt with fervent heat and the righteous walk out in the millennium over the ashes. And well, look here. John come and they thought, well, the mountains is going down and the valleys is coming up. They thought he was coming with a bulldozer or a road grader or something else. No, he come with the word. And so did Malachi 4. The, the word comes to the prophet. And he look here, you're talking about a burn up. These people have been, that fire coming out of his mouth had burnt this thing up. But not naturally, no more than John made the mountains go down. But spiritually, oh yeah, oh no, that's crazy thing I heard. Okay, go ahead. Give me your, give me your version of it. When their eyes were open, they knew him. Listen, brother, sister, the promised word could be promised to you. And you can see it. It's the hour for that. But when God reveals it, interprets it, then it's sinful to turn it away. Don't you never do that. God opened his eyes by showing him the manifested word that he had promised that he would take place. Now, always does in the same way he does it. He never changes his system in doing it. No. So remember, always the same. He promised the scriptures for each and every age. And when he manifests that scripture promise for that age, the people get their eyes open to see it are the ones who receive it. And he goes in, he's telling about the promise for this day. And then he manifests the promise for this day. Luke 17, 30. Hebrews 4, 12. Knowing the secret of the heart. And the people, oh, well, my goodness. I didn't what I was looking for. I was looking for something else. 
Well, tell you what, thank God for that we can look through the eye. And I'm seeing good. Amen. Okay, this is the last one. The unveiling of God. This just makes it pretty simple. Look here, we're talking about Jesus, the person of truth. Unveiling of God there in Jeffersonville, 1964. Ye are written epistles, read of all men. Or you are, I translate that and turn it around this way. See, just turn it around. Ye are epistles that have been written because you can't add nothing to it. That's read of all men, manifested word of God. In other words, and Peter and John to show it, when they were up there, they perceived that they were ignorant and unlearned. They had no education, but they had taken notice that they had been with Jesus. See, they were ignorant and unlearned, but they were written epistles. See, read that they had been with Jesus called Jesus. Now listen, Jesus was manifesting himself through them. Christ veiled in their flesh, manifested, made alive. And when we tell people that, they say, well, you can't be that. Look here. We are the only Christ they're going to ever see. They're looking for that one in the sky. And they're not going to see him. We are his body. The body, everything has been put together. It's the full body of Christ. He said Luther was a part, Wesley was a part, Pentecost, the prophets, just in that they were making, and he said the whole rapture now. He said that in 1963. And the people, well, you know, well, yeah, mm, no. I don't know nothing about what you're talking about. I know what he said. So we're the body. And just because the body come in another form, they said, oh no, that can't be him. But it was. It's what form? It come in wife form. She is him. And the head has come down. Headship. Whole thing. Complete. And we are the truth man affested. Thy word is truth. The person of truth. Look here. We are that person of truth today because we are the word. And we are his body. And he said, for a while he walked with them, but then he came and got in them and said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I'm going with you all the way. Praise the Lord. So i tell you what, it's good to know the person of truth. It's good to know truth. Look here, if you know the truth, there's no way that you're going to be trapped up in some strong delusion because why? You love the truth and the belief of the truth. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you tonight. Lord, we thank you for the truth of your word. The manifested word for our day, for every day, has been Jesus Christ on the scene, making the word live, Lord, making it manifest. And this day is no difference, Lord. You have done it once again. And just as always, the world has missed it. But Lord, you said all that the Father has given me will come to me, Lord. So we won't be one short. We won't be one over. We'll be exactly with what's on your book. And we thank you for that. And we give you praise this day in Jesus' name. Amen.